All right. So this is um, this talk about is, is is about Fred, which is basically let's take the whole x86 um, uh, exception architecture that's been around for 46 years and toss it out the window. Except not really. <laughs> so right now. The X X X86 has a very odd mix of two separate things. One, the original um, interrupt descriptor table, which uh, dates back to the 286, where it was a slight modification of what the original 886 from 1978 did. This is what I call, but especially at, with the 286 modifications, this is what I call extreme CISC. And that was sort of the architectural thinking at the time, because every instruction you executed had to be fetched from external memory, which ended up taking a very long time. But you also had multiple tables in memory to do all the various protection things that the, uh, was also uh, thought to be beneficial at the time. Um, it does have the nice aspect that it doesn't, it doesn't clobber a bunch of registers that you need. Um, it does use stack as a result, but especially after the uh, um, x 64 modifications to it, this stacks, you know, if you have to switch stacks for some reason, for example, because your current stack is no longer valid, um, it is not re-entrant. And if you, so for example, if you take an NMI, you don't want to assume that your current stack is, is, is valid. Um, and you take another, and for some reason you take another NMI, oops, you just clobbered your, you, you just clobbered your own frame. Then, well, this mechanism has a lot of data dependencies in it. There's a lot of reading one piece of data that then, that then affects the, what you're doing with the next piece of data. So, that, you know, so they're serialized. This cost, a lot of, this cost a lot of time, so we ended up with uh, the sysenter and syscall instructions that were introduced in the uh, Pentium 2 and the K6, respectively. Um, these are totally on the flip side of things. These are extreme risk instructions. Um, they don't do any memory references at all, but they do clobber registers. They clobber general purpose registers, which means that this architecture, this mechanism is completely unusable for any asynchronous events. Um, furthermore, at least syscall, which is what we use on the on x x eighty six sixty four side, it doesn't even it, it doesn't even let um, it doesn't even set up a stack when you enter. But notice that the interrupt descriptor table wants a stack. So these two mechanisms combined create problems that neither one of them alone have. So we're, re we're, we're redoing it in kind of an in-between style, um, calling it Cisc Lite. There are no memory tables. There are no gaps like where you have to run um, sort of in this, you're sort of in kernel mode, but you're not really. Um, so no need for, you know, running with the stack pointer set to user stack while you're in kernel mode. There's no need to do swap GS, because all of that is handled atomically by you know, this sort of Cisc-like um, 
implementation. We do again use the stack, but we have we have redone the stack switching mechanism so that it's re-entrant. We keep track of um, we keep track of a two-bit number called the stack level, and we only change the stack if the stack level requested by a, by a certain event is strictly larger than the current um, currently executing stack level. Therefore, if if you have the situation where you take you know, for whatever reason, take it, say an NMI from inside of an NMI handler, it will tell, it will notice that your stack level is the same, and therefore that the, you're currently operating on a busy stack, and it will not do the switch. We are, in, in the general idea of trying to be, of being re-entrant, we're trying to get rid of Special special registers that contain transient state. You know, we have a lot. We you know it's the current mechanism for a variety of reasons is is not extensible. And when we have to and and what, if we need more state than the 16 bits of error code, we have to put them in a register. Those registers are inherently volatile because if another event happens. They have to get overwritten. We can put them, but we can put them on the stack and have it have them to be reentrant. We're doing so. This is going back to the original concept of having one mechanism for entering and exiting the kernel, um, as well as entering and exiting any kind of event. Um, because modern operating systems, including Linux, generally want to have some common code to run at, on, entry and, uh, on entry and exit, instead of doing this vectoring in hardware that we've been doing with IDT, we're just, we're just, we give you an entry point and we let, we let software do the dispatch, Bec which is effectively what we're doing right now, when we, we, at least for interrupts, we actually have the IDT jump to a trampoline that saves the vector number and jumps to common code. And we, at the same time, we also have a bunch of code that's duplicated along a bunch of different paths that no, we're just doing one copy of it. We have we have an we have defined an extensible fra um, uh, stack frame format. It is it is a superset of the legacy format. So which otherwise we would have to otherwise basically we would have to redo PT regs, which would really not go over well. I have a feeling. Um, but we do add some missing information there, including what type of event. It is no longer the case that, um, as it was in, back in the 8086 days, that you can tell, actually it wasn't even true then, um, what, what kind of event you're do, dealing with just from the vector number. So, in, so the virtualization architectures have are already defined a a disambiguation mechanism a disambiguation mechanism for that we're extending that to to events we're also fixing some problems including but not limited to um, the fact that IRET unblocks NMIs unconditionally um, we lose n branch state when we take an exception. Uh, we lose STI shadow state when we take an exception. And uh, another, another one I didn't add was uh, we, don't, we, we, don't, um, we, don't claw, um, we don't restore part of RSP when we return to, when we return to, six, 
to 16-bit user space, uh, which led to a very ugly hack called, um, yeah, yeah, ESP fix. I I did that one. It was fun. <laughs> Another uh, thing in the entry code to go look at if you're ever bored on a. Saturday oh yeah, yeah. It it, it 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 will it will hurt your eyes. So. <laughs> so um, when you enter, when you enter, um, when when an event happens, the CPU will push this um, the stack frame uh, on on onto the stack. It will. It is always 64 byte aligned. The software can requ request additional space. On top of it, which we intend to use, which we intend to use for uh, call em emulation, we can also eventually, uh, if we want to, um, use it to enable red zone in the kernel. But that is a compiled, you know, that's obviously not com uh, compatible with running on legacy systems. But if we, you know, at some point in the future. Some, if someone is building a kernel to run on FRED systems alone, you could, you could enable red zone. So the, the green fields on here are the, exactly the same things as on the legacy stack frame. The Worth pointing out the, the error code, yes, you may get or you may not, and that's another one of the holes being fixed because right. in the range from 1.0 to 1F, you can't disambiguate, uh, for example, an interrupt hitting the alignment check vector, at which point the error code may or may not be there from hardware, but uh, you, you get to run with a uh, misaligned stack. Yeah. What are you doing about 32-bit uh, error codes on AMD? Um, AMD, I'll have to... Um I have to defer to 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 David, but um, the the so the blue fields here are are reserved fields, and what I what I would assume that they're doing is simply is simply expanding their code into into the 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 the, the, the blue field on the bottom. Yeah. Oh no, specifically Intel can only shove 16 bits of error code, AMD can shove 32 bits of error code, so can we just have those as not reserved, but like will be zero on Intel so that we don't have okay. to screw around with? Yeah, I, I, yeah th n yes, they will, they will be reserved. Right, but I want to avoid this scenario Intel. where we're on Intel and okay. then Intel says, oh, now these 16 bits that were reserved are magic value number two, and on AMD okay. they are the upper 16 bits so, of the error code. So Here's the thing, you know, I work for Intel. I can't speak for AMD. Um, I'm asking you guys to collaborate. We and we, we <laughs> even if even if we when we are collaborating, I'm not allowed to t speak on their behalf. Don't touch yeah. those error code bits, please. So anyway. Um, but I yes, one, there, one, there one is more question. The, the, the location of these. One, more. But um, what, what, one big crutch I have with the x86 exception model is, is the super limited number of interrupt vectors that we have. Right? Yeah. So especially when you have 8,000 CPUs, but only yeah. 256 vectors, that's a bit okay. small. So, so to answer solve it? both of these, both of your questions, notice that you know, some of these fields are pretty, pretty spread out and that there are, and that there are uh, you know, zero extended reserved fields next to them. Um, you know, you can draw, you can presumably draw your own conclusions from that. Thank you. And it's not like, it's not like the, uh, with, it's not like with IDT where we have to extend a long list of, of uh, descriptors to, 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 add, to add more vectors. This is just stuffing numbers into a field. The event data field there is repl um, uh, for is to provide additional information like CR2. like CR two um, instead of a trans instead of a transient uh, variable. Um, the other thing that we're we we are we have an entire 
unused field that we initialized to zero. But we also reserve the right to, to add additional data on top in, in future, in, in, you know, to support future features. These will be opt-in features, but you should keep that, you know, when, you know, designing, you know, for, for the purpose of designing, you should expect, should, should like plan for that to happen because for all we know, there could be, you know, a, a future, future event where there could be a need to, to put a lot more information available. Yes? Kind of a hair-brained idea. Have you guys thought about using Fred on VM exit to push VM exit information instead of having to define new VMCS fields? Um, it's an interesting idea. Um, it's, it's not, I mean, it, it's, it, I think, I think this, this, it falls a little bit under the category of we, we, we had to try very hard not to boil the ocean, <laughs> but it's an, in, it, it's, there may be, there may very well be some meaningful, um, um, there, there, we, we might be able to do something with it. it. It's an interesting idea, if nothing else. Does Fred make supervisor shadow stacks easier? Yes, yes it does. <laughs> and the reason why is that we have, we, we don't just have an option for, for, um, for, for the, um, the kernel to request additional space on the regular stack. We also have a mechanism for, to um, add um, additional, additional space on the shadow stack, which, is re which, uh, which comes in, into play when we are when we ha take an exception in the middle of, in the middle of code patching, and we have to and we have to simulate a function call, which is one of our, you know, which is an incredibly ugly thing right now. Can can we still? Yeah, uh, it works, oh. but <laughs> so you know. Oh. Can we still uh, uh, continue to, uh, uh, let's say, rewrite that uh, those are registers? I'm sorry, what? So those are, uh, for example, change that are RIP to or jump back to the different uh, pro, uh, uh, place. So th those are the registers. Yeah. That that's the values that are saved from the from before the event. You know, because they are over they are overwritten when when you take the event. Uh, uh, no, uh, okay. <laughs> I, I may not understand the question, right? Uh, how we can uh, then uh, uh, back to the, uh, we, uh, let's say that after the uh, event, uh, how we can uh, return to the, the event place? Is that the oh, yes. So there, there are two instructions, there are two new instructions um, that replace um, that replace IRET, the, you know, they're called ERET U and ERET S, which is, uh, which return to to user space and supervisor state uh, respectively. So that uh, those are, uh, let's say that instruction will uh, restore that uh, those are. Yes, uh, that's okay. correct. Sorry if I didn't make that clear. Okay, we're apparently out of time.